morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Mukesh Kaulesser. As president of the College Council, I will chair today's annual meeting. Notice having been given and quorum being present, I call this meeting to order. Welcome to our 2021 annual meeting of the Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers. In light of the ongoing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and to ensure the safety of attendees and participants, we are hosting this year's annual meeting and education day entirely online via live stream. While the annual meeting is an essential regulatory event, the safety of our college staff, our members and our stakeholders remain our top priority. The annual meeting and education day, also known as AMED, is part of the Glenda McDonald educational series named in honor of the college's founding registrar. Glenda was steadfast in her support for ongoing education, and once again, we dedicate this event to her memory. This year's AMID will be conducted over a two-day two period with eight educational sessions that will take place throughout both days. The theme of this year's event is diversity and change in society and practice. This theme reflects the college's strategic priorities, namely to increase diversity and inclusion. It is also a reflection of the times in which we find ourselves. The world has changed, and that is without a doubt. And it is important that we, the college and its members, continue listening to adapting alongside and learning from the public, including the clients and communities we serve. The Ontario College of Social Workers and Social Service Workers acknowledges the history of the land on which we are gathered. This land is a territorial territory in many nations, including the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Hootain Oshoni, and the Wendat peoples. The college office where we are hosting the meeting today is in a dish with one spoon territory, which is a treaty between the Anishinaabeg, Mississaugas, and Hootain Oshoni that bound them to share the territory and protect the land in the spirit of community. Today, the province of Ontario is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, from the Cree in the northern reaches to the, Delaware, to the Delaware in the south. Each nation is unique in their beliefs, language and histories, and we gather here in the spirit of openness and a commitment to continue to recognize and reflect upon the important work ahead. Through its strategic plan, the College Council has indicated its commitment to moving forward on the challenging and very important issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion as they relate to the college regulatory role. This overreaching priority encompasses anti-Black and anti-Indigenous racism and other forms of systemic oppression which disproportionately affect racialized community. Within this priority, the college has made a commitment to developing partnership with Indigenous communities in order to begin to implement the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada's call for action within the regulatory context. In doing so, we recognize that reconciliation is an ongoing individual and collective process. I am pleased to announce that the Honorable Todd Smith, Minister of Children's, Community and Social Services has provided video greetings and opening remarks for our 2021 annual meeting. Todd Smith is the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services and a member of Provincial Parliament for the Bay of Quinty riding. Minister Smith was first elected to the riding of Prince Edward Hastings in October of 2011. While in opposition, he serves as a PC critic in several different files, including small business and red tape, Pan and Para Pan American Games, Hydro One, Natural Resources and Forestry and Energy. In June 2018, Minister Smith was elected in the new Bay of Quinty riding as part of a progressive conservative majority government. Premier Doug Ford named him government house leader and minister of government and consumer services in June. In November, he was named Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade while remaining government house leader. As of June 2020, he sits as Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Amid all of his commitments, Smith's family remain his most important priority. He enjoy spending time with his wife, Tanya, a high school teacher and his daughters, Peyton and Reagan. Thank you, Minister Smith for providing video remarks for today's annual meeting. Please join me in viewing the Honorable Todd Smith's remarks. 
Hi there, I'm Todd Smith, Ontario's Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Let me start by saying how glad I am to have the opportunity to say a few words ahead of your annual meeting and education day. You've all been doing such amazing work both before the pandemic and especially throughout it to protect people and that's such an important job. Each and every one of Ontario's 22,000 social workers and social service workers have stepped up and dealt with adversity over the last year and a half. And I think I speak for all Ontarians in thanking you for your efforts. Your commitment and passion for your jobs and the people you serve makes a real difference for people who are trying to reach their potential and live their best lives. I know your theme for today is diversity and change in society and practice. And the pandemic has certainly taught us that we need to be able to change and adapt to the world around us. For our part here at the Ministry, we're also undergoing changes to transform and strengthen how we deliver programming while protecting frontline services for future generations. I know you all share this commitment to support people, especially the most vulnerable. So again, thank you for everything you do. Have a great annual meeting and Education Day, everyone. Thank you again, Minister Smith. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our colleagues from the professional associations who are joining us today via live stream. DP Sir, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ontario Associ Association of Social Workers, and Barb Baker, the President of Ontario's Social Service Workers Association. We are very pleased to have you both join us today. I would like to acknowledge our council and non-council members who perform a critical function in helping the college meet its statutory obligations and objectives. Our council is made up of 21 members. Our public members are John Fleming, Karen Fromm, Kerry McEachran, Pamela Murphy, and Deidre Smith. Our registered social service workers are Amanda Betancourt, Charlene Cruz, Angel Desormeaux, Judy Gardner, Shelley Hale, myself, Mukesh Kaulesser, and Sue Ellen Merritt. Our registered social workers are Durell Allen, Kenta Asakura, Sanjay Govindaraj, Francis Keo, Donald Penton, Lisa Seaburn, and Beatrice Treb Warner. I also want to thank the non-council members who serve in the statutory and non-statutory committees. Social work members, Rita Silvertorn and Dahlia Sinclair Frigio. Social service work members, Greg Clark and Dave McWilliams. Thank you all for your hard work and ongoing dedication. On behalf of the College Council, I would now like to take this opportunity to re report briefly on some of the College's activities highlighted from 2020. As a regulatory body for social workers and social service workers in Ontario, the College is committed to protecting the public interests. We fulfill our public protection mandate by ensuring that our members provide professional and ethical care and services to the communities they serve and they are accountable to the public. In 2020, to fulfill our primary duty, we have made progress on a number of fronts. The college launched its 2020-2023 strategic plan, which identified four strategic priorities that guide our current and future decisions. They are as follows. Uphold ethical and professional practice, strengthen stakeholder engagement and government relations, increase diversity, equity, and inclusion, and enhance regulatory effectiveness. The college strengthens its stakeholder engagement and government relations in 2020. The college and its members experienced new and unforeseen pressures amidst the ongoing impact of the pandemic, both professionally and personally. Social workers and social service workers remain integral in providing support and care for clients and communities they serve, perhaps now more than ever. We provide our members and other stakeholders with regular and timely updates, resources and responses related to the COVID-19 pandemic using all our communication platform. In late 2020, the college undertook a review of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on members practice through a widely distributed survey. With approximately 20% of the membership participating 
The survey provided important insight into the ongoing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on members' practice and identified areas where the college might enhance its practice support to members through the pandemic and beyond. Key insights were shared with members and other stakeholders in the spring issue of Perspective. And most recently, in a follow-up e-bulletin related to increasing accessibility and ensuring equitable services for clients as a result of the shift to electronic services. In 2020, Council began the important work of removing, of moving, rather, forward on our commitment to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusions. An integral part of this work was the decision to strike a diversity, equity, and inclusions task group. A call for expression of interest from non-council members of the college was sent out to members in early 2021. As noted in an e-bulletin sent to members earlier this month, the executive committee faced an extremely difficult task in selecting five non-council members of the college from among the 112 expression of interest received. The committee carefully reviewed members' powerful personal accounts of their lived experience, descriptions showing a range of social work and social service work experience, and thoughtful statements reflecting members' deep desire to contrib contribute to the college's work in this important area. The task group will provide recommendation and advice to Council on the potential for and or existence of systemic and structural racism, discrimination and or bias within the college's statutory, regulatory and governance policies and processes. Strategies including bylaw and policy amendments, standards, guidelines, and other tools to address any identified issues. An approach to the development of partnership with Indigenous communities to begin to implement the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action within the regulatory sector. And the engagement of community groups and leaders in the activities of the task group. We invite you to learn more about the DEI task group, including its members, on the college's newly created webpage, which can be found under the resource tab on the college's website. The DEI task group will hold its first virtual meeting on June 29th, and we look forward to sharing next steps with you and the important works of this task group. As part of our mandate to protect the public, we continue to work with our government stakeholders on important issues including highlighting the role of the college and the importance of regulation under the Child, Youth and Family Services Act and the regulation of Children's Aid Society staff. We believe that the registration of CES workers is an important way to ensure equity. All Ontarians, especially vulnerable children and youth and Black, Indigenous and people of color communities served by the CES workers deserve the protection provided by college oversight. The college will continue to work with its government and sector partners to emphasize its important role and relevance in the child welfare sector and to seek changes to the regulations which would address the risk of the public associated with the fact that many CAS workers in Ontario are unregulated by the professional regulatory body. The college is committed to increasing diversity, equity and inclusion across its organizational process, resources and materials. In 2020, we developed new web pages and resources dedicated to fulfilling this strategic priority, posting two educational forums on addressing racism on the front lines and providing equitable services for LGBTQ plus newcomers, respectively. As part of our commitment to reconciliation, we required all members to review the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action and the United Nations declarations on the rights of Indigenous peoples as part of their required readings for the Continuing Competence Program, also known as the CCP. College continues to enhance its regulatory effectiveness through the work of its council. Last year, College Council approved a number of revisions to governance policies that build public confidence and reflect best practices in the regulatory sector. We continue to engage with other Canadian social work regulators and shared regula regulatory concern, including the registration of CAS workers, mobility, electronic and other practice issues, and diversity, equity and inclusion in the regulatory context. The college also provided feedback on a number of issues, including to Health Canada Office of the Controlled Substances, 
regarding applications for exemptions under the Controlled Drug and Substance Act related to, to psilocybin assisted therapy. Ontario Health on their draft quality standards for delirium and the College of Dietitians of Ontario for the Delegation of Controls Act standards. College staff has also engaged with the broader regulatory community, an important way that we can ensure best practices and continuous improvement. In April 2020, the College Registrar and CEO, Lise Betteridge, was part of an International Council on Licensure, Enforcement and Regulation, also known as CLARE, panel on the regulatory response to COVID-19 and in the fall was part of a Canadian network of agencies of regulation panel called Effective Governance, Maximize Innovation in the Absence of Legislative Change. The Registrar and CEO also chaired Cleared Administrative Legislature and Policy Subcommittee, was a faculty member for the Executive Leadership Program and was elected President of the Canadian Council of Social Work Regulators. The involvement of college's senior staff in key discussions, representations, and initiatives in 2020 played a key role in our effectiveness as a regulator. I am proud of the work of the college council and staff whose commitment has helped position the college as a leader in the regulatory sector. I remain very optimistic about the year ahead and look forward to growing, adapting, and learning alongside our stakeholders. I thank you.